Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wonderful children. We are uh, about to embark on a journey of math here. Uh, the semester one study guide. Ah, oh, I'm excited about this. Let's get right to it, shall we? All right, first one. Vanilla Ice just purchased a home in West Palm Beach, Florida. That is actually where he does renovate some homes. Uh, he plans to install tile in the entry and kitchen. How many square feet of tile should he order? And also, if the tiles are four inches by six inches, how many tiles should he order? All right. So we're talking about the entry and the kitchen. I will go ahead and outline that in red. Beautiful. So we got ourselves a rectangle, right? That kitchen is eight by 20. So we can go ahead and toss an eight right there. Let me make that a little, that's better. All right, so eight feet. And then if the kitchen is 20, but if we look above here, that's 20 by 30. So the living room is 20 going up and down here, right? But the dimension I really want is the 30 30 feet all the way across, okay? So I've got myself an area of eight times 30, which gives me 240 square feet. So first question, answer. Boom, how many square feet of tile should he order? Now the next part, you can go about this in a couple ways, okay? Well, I could find the area of one tile, area of one tile, and that's four times six is 24 square inches. So I've got two different units here, right? 240 square feet, 24 square inches. Hmm, something's gotta change. So either I need to convert the area of the entire thing to square inches or the area of one tile to square feet. Either way is okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the area of the entire entry and kitchen to square inches all right so if i take 240 and i'll go different color now 240 times there's 12 inches in one foot but we're talking area so our units are squared so really i'm multiplying by 144 so i'm going to go ahead and plug that into my calculator 240 times 144 and now i have uh 34,560 square inches that is my area right there, but in square inches. Now I can just take that 34,560 and divide it by the area of one tile. So divide that by 24 and I'm going to get 1,440 tiles. Boom. Done. Excellent. Now, of course, we're going to have to do some overages and things like that, but that would be like the exact amount of tiles that we would need. Another way of going about this is figuring out how many tiles could I fit in one square foot. Um, and you can go do that way too, but you should still get to 1,440, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and show that off to the side here. So I would have, uh, let's see here. A tile is four inches by six inches. So that would be two tiles going across here for 12 inches total, six and six. And then I'd have one, oh, let me go a little bigger, one, two, and then we got four, four and four. So that's 12 out there, right? So I've got six tiles per square foot. So I've got 240 square feet to fill. So that would be six for each one, 240 times six gives me the same 1440 for my tiles, right? 1,440. That way I think some of it we might find a little bit easier, but we don't always have perfectly square foot fitting tiles. Like if they were, you know, eight inches, you know, four inches by eight inches, well now it's a little bit trickier to kind of fit together in one square foot. So I like the one that I have over here, uh, which is why I did that first. Okay, let's keep going, boom. Number two here, find the area of these building objects, all right. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. That's a formula you should have committed to memory, okay? Well, my base is 28 and my height is six. The base and the height are always perpendicular to each other. They have to be perpendicular. So here I'm gonna have area equals one half and then base is 28, height is six. So if I multiply those all together, I get 84. Let's see here, it's square feet, so. That's an acceptable notation. Awesome sauce. Wonderful. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, next one. Area of a circle here. That's a circular window. That's kind of fun, right? So area of a circle, that's going to be pi times my radius squared. Well, it already gives me my radius of 1.2, right? 
So I'm going to have area of the circle is equal to pi times 1.2 squared. I'm going to plug that into my calculator. So when I do pi in my calculator, I want you to use that pi button, not 3.14. All right. I want you to use the actual pi button. It's more accurate. I'm going to get, let's see here. We got 4.523. 4.523 and it goes on forever. So we're gonna go ahead and say about 4.5 and that's again feet squared. Awesome, fantastic and wonderful. Ooh, whoa, a regular pentagon deck. Someone's going crazy with their deck designs. I love it, excellent. All right, if you remember our area of a regular polygon, regular polygon is one half times the apothem times the perimeter, okay? Well, my apothem that's A right there. My perimeter I can find from one side and multiplying it by five. So A is equal to six and my perimeter is equal to, well, there's five sides at 10 feet a piece, so that's 50. Now I can plug this all into my calculator or actually into the formula first. And I can actually probably do this one in my head. These look like decent numbers. All right, area is one half. And then I got my apothem is six and then my perimeter is 50. One half times six is three. Three times 50 is 150. Again, we're using feet, so square feet. Awesome, wonderful. Keep moving, keep moving. All right, ooh, trapezoid. Woo, area of a trapezoid. I'm gonna change markers already. All right, area of a trapezoid uh, is, we're gonna have to take into account both of our bases. And there's a couple ways to write this one. We have one half times base one plus base two times my height. Or you could do base one plus base two times height all over two. We'll go with this one. Uh, it kind of looks a little bit like a triangle formula, but there are two bases to take into account. So if I'm gonna plug that into my formula here, I've got one half and then my base one is my eight feet. My base two is the 12 feet. And then my height, the height remember is perpendicular to the base. In this case, both bases. Um, so that's the 1.5. That three foot there, that three, that's there to distract you, kind of. It's gonna be like, that's just a side length, right? So we can find the perimeter if we wanted, but here we're asked for the area, so we gotta use that base. So if I plug this all in, um, I've got one half times 20. If I do a little bit of mental math here, that's 10 times 1.5, that's gonna be 15 feet squared, all right? If you plug that all in your calculator, you should get the same thing. Cool, awesome, fantastic. I like to do a little mental math whenever I can. Woo, this one looks like a composite figure. Oh man, oh man, I'm gonna go green. All right, um, so we can break this thing into a, in a part in one of two ways, really, all right? Um, we could go like this, and now I have uh, five times 10 plus three times three. So I'm gonna have 50 plus nine, so my area is 59. And I'm gonna come down here a little bit area equals 59 feet squared. Love having units. You could have also broken it apart the other way, and that's fine too. You should still get the same answer. You could have gone here um, and then have different numbers, but this one seemed the easiest to me because I see dimensions right away. All right, parallelogram. Whew, parallelogram, bro. All right, formula for that is going to be base times height, okay? But remember, my base has to be perpendicular to my height. So what's that gonna look like? Well, my base is gonna be 10, which is perpendicular to the height of seven. So my area equals 70 feet squared. Cool, awesome, wonderful, fantastic. It's a great, great little review of some area. Let's keep going here. Page two, page two. This is gonna be a decently, it's gonna be a decent length video, video I think here, but hey, what else? All right, find the area of a stop sign, which is a regular octagon. Each side is 10 inches and the apothem is approximately 12 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and ooh, check this out. Let's see if it works. Ah, oh, I really thought it was gonna work. That's, that's a real bummer. Anyways, I got eight sides, but maybe I should change that to red here because it's a stop sign. All right, no longer ink to shape. Thanks for nothing. Okay, so each side is about 10. And the apothem is approximately 12 inches. Remember, the, the apothem is from the center, perpendicular to the side. I basically have everything I need here, almost. The apothem is uh, 12. My perimeter is going to be uh, 10 times there's eight sides, so 80. Um, so now I have area 
of that regular po of the regular polygon is one half times the apothem, which is twelve times my perimeter, which is eighty. Um, let's see here. That's six times eighty. That's four eighty, I think, inches squared. I'm gonna double check that. Boom. Just checked it. Plugged into the TI eighty four just in case the mental math was right on point. All right. Boom. There we go. Awesome. Number four. What is the area of the deck surrounding the hot tub? Um, I've got two circles here, an outer circle and an inner circle. Um, I want the area of the deck, which is that shaded region there. So if I find the area of the outer circle and subtract the area of the inner circle, then I should be Gucci, as they say. All right, so area of the big circle, we'll do in red, and that's going to be pi times, ooh, what's my radius? 24 divided by 2 is 12 uh, squared. So we got 144 pi. I'll leave it like that for now. The next one um, is, let's see here, area of the inner circle. Well, it's pi times, and it looks like my diameter is 10 down here, so radius is 5. All right, we get 25 pi. Cool. So now I can do 144 pi minus 25 pi. And we can get ourselves a wonderful exact answer. Let's see, it'll be 120, uh, 119 pi. And that would be feet squared. I can also plug that into my calculator. So if I just type in 119 times pi into my calculator, I'm going to get 373.849, so 0.8 feet squared. That would be acceptable as well. All right, if it's multiple choice, find which one it is. If it says, give me an exact answer, that's the 119 pi. If it says round to the nearest tenth, there's your answer, 373.8 feet squared. Awesome. All right, an 8 by 10 bathroom and a 10 by 10 bathroom is being tiled with 4 inch by 4 inch tiles. How many tiles do you need for both bathrooms? Okay, well, how about this? Um, bath 1 is going to be 8 by 10, which equals 80 uh, feet squared. Uh, bath two is 10 by 10, which is going to be a hundred feet squared. Cool. So total area is 180 feet squared. This is kind of like the other problem, right? Now I have four by four inch tiles. So my, uh, tile area is four times four, which is 16 inches squared. So I got to make some conversions here, potentially. You could do the layout and figure out how many tiles in each one. This is going to be a more universal approach. So this is what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and convert this to inches squared. So I need to multiply by 144, or I'm going to say 12 squared. So that's going to give me, so 180 times 12 squared or 144 is going to be 25,920 uh, inches squared. And now I can take that 25,920 and divide it by 16. That's each tile. So divide that by 16. I just got it in my calculator right now. No big deal. I've got 1,620. What up, Jenny? She wants to go outside. I think I'm going to have to let her out. Um, 1,620 um, tiles. For both bathrooms. Cool. I like it. Awesome. I say, I'm saying awesome a lot. I'm just going to keep going with it. All right, next one. Find the area of the roof and siding of the garage pictured below. Even the hidden sides. The slope of the roof is 912 uh, and has a one foot overhang. The length of the garage is 20 feet, but the length of the roof is 22 feet. Okay, so we do need to take that into account in this one. We're not always prompted for that. This one we are. You will need to calculate some missing dimensions. Uh, so give you a hint here. You'll still need the height of the gable end roof and the length of the slope part of the roof. All right. So we got a bit of work to do on this one here. Let's try to stay organized. So I need to figure out um, what the height of that gable end. I'm going to draw this line in right here. I need that height. It's a little off. Guess that's better. Um, so I need that. Okay. Well, I do know that this right here is going to be eight. This is going to be halfway across, right? If we're framing this up correctly if it's not all crooked um and i know that my pitch is 9 12 so 9 rise and a 12 run and right now i want to know what my rise is if we have an 8 foot run 
So I'll have to cross multiply. So I'll have 72, and this is gonna be my x right here. So 72 equals 12x divided by 12. I wanna say this is gonna be some kind of a decimal here. So 72 divided by 12 might be like 7.5 or something. Uh, six, not a decimal. I can do math. <laughs> That's right, it would be six. All right, so x equals six feet. That's six feet. All right, cool, so we got the height. I like that. Um, so now I've got enough, it looks like, to figure out the area of all the sides, right? Okay, so I have, um, let's see here, 9 by 20, right, for the side side. So let's say side is 9 by 20, um, which gives me 180. But there's two of those. So times 2 equals 360 feet squared. So that would be my side elevations. And then the um, front and back, we'll say front and back. Um, that's gonna be two things. One is gonna be uh, nine by 16 plus, then I have the triangle up top, right? So we have one half and then my base is the 16, but my height is six, okay? And what's that give me? So we have, so this is just be for one of them. I guess we could do this. Put it all in parentheses and we're gonna have to double that, okay? So I have nine by 16, I don't wanna make a mistake, I'm gonna throw this in my calculator, plus um, one half times 16 times six. That's gonna all give me 192, but that's all times two. And then, yeah, and I get 384. Yep, feet squared. So if I put those two together, total, we'll say like siding or whatever you need for the outside um, is going to be, uh, let's see here, plus uh, 360. Uh, we get 744 feet squared. That's our total for all the sides. Now let's do the roof. And I'll do the roof in red because the roof is currently pink and it kind of matches, but I think pink won't show up that great. All right. So sides are good. We accounted for the hidden ones. Time to do the roof. Um, so we already know from the prompt that this length is 22 feet, but we need to know what this sloped part is. I'll call that Y, all right? Now, how am I gonna figure that out? If we think about our most recent unit, or one of the most recent ones, um, Pythagorean theorem, right? I have six squared plus eight squared, so six squared plus eight squared equals Y squared. And actually, if you remember your triples, this is gonna be 10, but we could work it all out. We have 36 plus 64 is 100. So Y squared equals 100. So Y is gonna equal 10 after we square root on both sides. So 10 feet. All right, so my roof, that one's actually not too bad. It's just, uh, just a couple rectangles. So we have, um, Roof equals, and it's going to be 22 times 10, which is 220 feet. But there's two sides, so we're going to get 440 feet squared. All right. So total for the roof is that, and total for the siding is the blue. I'm actually going to print this as a PDF, so roof and then siding. All right, I like it, cool. Find the surface area of the roof, the shaded part. I mean, there are two sides of that roof, meaning the stuff behind, not just that there's two pieces of it. All right, this is a kind of a cool little, little barn style roof. I can't remember the official name of it. I should look that up. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, it looks like we got an eight foot section by 32 and a four foot section by 32. So um, eight times, not 42, 32. Um, is going to be, what is that? I don't want to make a mistake in this video. 256. That's right. Okay. And then we have a four foot by 32, right? I'm getting this 32 from down here. And that is going to be 128. And if we add those two up, I get 384. But that's only for what we see. So I do need to multiply this by two and I will get my final answer of 768 feet squared, okay? So we got our hidden two sides. That's gonna be everything, I love it. Ooh, algebra review, I'm into that. 
Okay, <clears throat> solve for x in, in each situation. So I'm going to have to distribute this 3. Uh, so I get 146 equals negative 7 plus 21x plus 6. I'm going to combine some like terms. 146 equals 21x minus 1. I'll add 1 over. 147 equals 21x. 147, is that divisible by 21? I don't know. It is. x equals 7. All right. Distribute my negative 5 here, right? That is a negative 5. So I have 6x minus 30x minus 40 equals negative 184. Combine some like terms. So I've got negative 24x. I'll add 40 over here while I'm at it. Save a little time here. Um, and I'm going to get, let's see here, negative 144. And if I divide that by negative 24, I'm going to get 6. It's a bad 6. So x equals 6. Okay. New color, new problem. Uh, looks like I don't have any distributing to do here, just combining of like terms. So I'll do a negative 11 plus 2x equals x minus 3. Now i got to get some variables, uh, you know, your x's together and move that 11. So I'll add 11 to both sides. I can also subtract x in the same step. So that's gone. This becomes x. That's gone. And this becomes 8. Okay, right, I'm done. Awesome. No dividing in that one. Cool. Did I circle it? I did. Good. All right. Find the surface area, include all surfaces. Woo! This is, uh, this is a beefy problem right here, if you, you know, I tell you what. All right, we're going to start with our cylinder first. Okay, let's do this. So first with the cylinder here, um, and what we're dealing with with our surface area, we got to kind of got to put some things together, right? We've got circles, so I know an area of a circle is pi r squared. And if you remember for a cylinder, it's the, the wrapping around it, right? The lateral area, as we call it. Um, that is going to be a rectangle. Um, so the lateral area, the part that goes around it, that is <clears throat> going to be our seven is our height, but our base is actually the circumference of the circle. It's the distance around here that will give us that. So what we're going to have here is uh, two pi r times my height. Okay. That's what the lateral area is for that one. Um, I always like to just remember that it's a rectangle and think about what dimension that would be of that circle. So let's go ahead and put this together. So I've got, um, the circle, so area of the circle part is going to be pi times, it looks like a radius of three squared. So that's nine pi, but there are two of them, right? So times two gives me 18 pi. All right, so there's one of them. And then I'll go ahead and get the rectangle. Um, that is seven times and then our circumference. So let me zoom in a little bit here. So we got the lateral area is gonna be two pi times the radius of three, it's a terrible three. And that would be, uh, and then also times our height, which was seven. So I've got six times seven or 21 times two, that's 42 pi. Okay, so if I put those two together, um, 18 pi plus uh, 42 pi, that's 60 pi. Actually, let me, so that's the total surface area equals 60 pi um and that was feet yeah feet squared or if we do an approximation which would be the squiggly equals so 60 times pi that's going to give me 188.4955 so let's say one decimal place 188.5 188.5 feet squared get both of those whole thing boom all right so there's my final answer for that cylinder. Let's go up into the square base pyramid. Okay, we'll go different colors so things don't get mixed up. Um, I'm gonna go more drastic though with my color change. I'm gonna go purplish, okay. So for a square base pyramid, it's, it's just triangles and squares, right? So the base, let's just say this, the area of the base, actually I'll call that big B. That's gonna be eight times eight, which is 64 feet squared. I'm kind of encroaching over there. I'm going to write that below. 64 feet squared. Okay. And then my triangles are all, if that's eight, right, this is going to be eight as well. So I have a bunch of triangles. Area of a triangle is one half times the base of eight times 15, which is perpendicular to it, right? So I'm going to get 60 there, 
feet squared. But there are how many of those triangles? There's four of them. So I got to multiply that by four and I get 240 for what's called the lateral area, all the triangles wrapping around. So my total surface area, total surface area equals, and that's gonna be the 64 that we had plus 240. So 64 plus 240 is what, 304? 304 feet squared. Final answer, woo! All right, save a little space by getting a little more vertical there. Time for the cone, oh boy. This is awesome. All right. Oh, I'm, I'm happy about this one here. This is going to be great. Okay, so I have the height of my cone, which is seven feet. What I need for the surface area is actually, and let me do this in a different color here. What I need for this one is actually, um, I'm going to go to, uh, let's see here. How about blue? There we go. Um, I need this one. I need the slant height. Hmm. Well, this is going to be perpendicular. My height's going to be perpendicular to that base. How would I figure out that missing dimension? Pythagorean theorem. I thought you'd never ask. All right. So 3 squared plus 7 squared equals C squared. So I'm going to get uh, 9 plus 49. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and square root that. And I'm going to get, uh, we'll say C is the square root of 58, which is also equal to uh, 7.6 when we approximate it, but I'm gonna go with the square root of 58 to keep things accurate, okay? So now I've got that slant height. The area formula here is pi times my radius times my slant height. That's the L there, the cursive L. So once you have that information, it's actually a pretty easy formula to plug things into. So pi times my radius of three times the square root of 58, that looks like a, not a five, there we go. And that was not going to be very nice for like an exact enemy. You have to leave it like that to be exact. But I'll go ahead and plug this all into my calculator um, using that pi button, right? And that's going to be final answer of 71. Oh, not final answer. 71.776. I'm going to leave this like this for now. 776 and change. What did I forget about here? I forgot about the area of the circle. All right. So keep this one in mind though, right? We're going to keep that in mind. So the area of my circle here, my circle base, is just pi times the radius squared. So pi times 3 squared, which is 9 pi. And now I can add those two together. So let's add 9 pi to that. So we've got um, total surface area equals 71.776 and change plus um, the 9 pi. So add 9 pi. Oops. and I get a total surface area of, once I round, it's gonna be 100.05, so we'll call that 100.1 feet squared. Cool, I like it, awesome. Whew, this is some stuff, man, this is a lot of stuff. We're, we're still moving here, we're still moving. All right, I'm gonna scooch over to some red marker on this one, <clears throat> regular pentagon. All right, so we got a regular pentagonal prism that's going on, prisms are wrapped in rectangles pyramids are wrapped in triangles all right so this one is wrapped in rectangles so it's a prism um, i've got pentagons and i've got rectangles well we've already reviewed both of those right the area of a pentagon area of that pentagon is one half uh times the apothem times the perimeter okay so this would be my pentagon my bases right the big b so pentagon that's b all right um, so let's see here. We got to do a little bit of work for some stuff here on this. Oh, oh no, gives us, gives us our apothem. Awesome. So we have one half times my apothem of four. And then my perimeter, if one base is five, then my perimeter is 25, right? P equals five times five. I'm going to put that in a space that's not in the way. P equals five times five, which is 25. Okay. So here we've got um, 100 times a half, which is 50, but there's two of them, right? So um, times two, that equals 100 for both bases. Both bases, all right. So that's one of them. Then I need my rectangles. Well, all my rectangles are five by 10, right? So the lateral area is five times 10, 
How many sides are there? There's five. So I'm going to get, let's see here, we got 50 times five, we get 250. All right, and then I'm going to put all that together. So total surface area equals, and that's going to be 100 plus 250. That's 350 feet squared. Make sure you got those units at the very end, all right? Total surface area is that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Whew. Man, so these are some quality problems here. Quality problems. All right. Um, we'll do one more here. I'm going to switch colors again. I don't even know what other colors we got. Like uh, maybe, maybe orange or darker purple. How about a darker purple? Okay. Again, we have a prism here. This is a triangular prism. Okay. The triangles are our bases. The rectangles that wrap around, that's our lateral area. So the area of the triangle, which would be our bases, would be one half times base, which is either eight or six. I'll go with six times my height of eight. So that's one half times 48. Uh, which would be 24, but we have two bases, two bases equals 48 um, inches, it looks like for this one, inches squared. Um, sometimes I forget my units, I think, along the way. Most important is units at the end there, unless we have like a lot of different units throughout the problem, then you really got to keep them straight. Okay, so now my rectangles. It looks like we actually have different rectangles this time. So lateral area consists of a, looks like a 20 by 10, we have a 20 by eight, and we have a 20 by six. And if I add all that up, I get 480. And then if I add that to my 48, I'm gonna get, so a total surface area of uh, 48 plus 480, that is going to give me, drum roll please, it'd be 528 inches squared. All right, man, it's a lot of work right there. It's beautiful. Look at all the wonderful colors, all the wonderful colors. Okay, let's go to some application, shall we? All right, number 10 here. Vanilla is adding a dormer picture below to his dope Palm Beach flip. He needs to know how many squares, 100 square foot quantities of shingles to order. Make sure to account for both sides of the roof. So this dormer here that we have, um, it looks like, so it comes back there like this, up, over it's actually a trapezoid i know that it kind of looks weird with the three-dimensional stuff but it is a trapezoid so if i were to draw this out i'm going to make the short side up top the shape it is, is is something like this where this is the 10 foot this is the 13 over here and then this is four foot okay the unknown one is that that angled piece which is okay because these are the three pieces that we need to to find the area here so the area of a trapezoid which is what we're dealing with even though it's not an isosceles trapezoid it's a trapezoid no less is one half times base one so four plus ten. Oh my goodness jenny uh times our height we just got mail. That's why Jenny's barking. Okay. And then multiply by my height of 13. So if I go ahead and uh, put this all together here, I'm going to have uh, 14 times or plus 10, or sorry, 4 plus 10 is 14 times 1 half is 7 times 13. Um, that's a terrible 13 there. That equals 91 uh, feet squared. But keep in mind, remember it said, um, make sure to account for both sides of the roof. So I do need to multiply this by 2, and I'm going to get 1. Uh, 82 for my total area, 182. All right, 182 feet square. Cool. So how many squares of shingles do we want? Those are 100 square foot quantities. So if we divide that by 100, I'm going to get, so I'll do that up here, 182 divided by 100. That's going to be um, 1.82. So we'll say two squares. Okay. Awesome. Ooh, challenge problem, challenge problem. All right, so Vanilla Ice came into some free patio pavers from a neighbor down the street, Marky Mark Wahlberg, and the Funky Bunch. All right, he has about 1,000 six inch by three inch pavers and wants to make the semicircle patio picture below. All right, Jenny is busy policing the neighborhood right now from her, from her bedroom. All right, <clears throat> so let's see if we can get through this now. So he has about 1,000 six inch by three inch pavers and wants to make a semicircle pic, uh, patio pictured below. It has a radius of 12 feet. Does he have enough to get the job done? So we're dealing with a semicircle, half a circle with a radius of 12. Well, how about this? Let's find the area of a circle 
with a radius of 12 first, right? So pi times 12 squared. So 144 pi. And since it's a semicircle, it'd be half that. So what, 72 pi feet squared? Cool. No need for the calculator yet, right? Those are some decent numbers. I can just keep it in terms of pi. Now he has about a thousand six inch by three inch pavers. Why don't we figure out what the area of the pavers is um, that he can cover, right? So if I say area of pavers, so I'd have six times three gives me 18 um, inches squared. And then he has a thousand of those, right? 1000 times 18 gives me 18,000. Not pavers, <laughs> inches squared. That's the inch, inch in coverage. And this is where it really helps to keep track of your units, right? The other ones we were dealing with all the same units as we were getting the different bases and things like that. So not labeling was, was okay until our final answer. Here, we have two different units. So we're gonna have to do some kind of conversion here. Um, it's up to us what we want to do. If we want to convert the original area of the semicircle or if we want to do the pavers, I don't care. Um, how about this? I'm going to go change the pavers to square feet. We haven't done that version yet, right? So I'm going to divide by 12 squared, right? My um, square footage should be a smaller number than, square, than the square inches. So if I take 18,000 and divide it by uh, 12 squared, which is 144, I'm gonna get 125 feet squared. That's the total coverage of pavers. Currently, I have my other one in terms of pi, so how about I multiply out 72 times pi? So if I do this, this area here is 226.19 uh, um, feet squared. So clearly not enough, and especially if we add the 10%, which is, uh, we're going to have 226.19 um, and change times 1.1, not 1 times 1, that looks like 1 times 1, 1 1.1. So if I were to multiply that by 1.1, my total area that I needed to cover with that waist is actually 248.8 uh, feet squared. So unfortunately, not enough and our work would justify that cool all righty sorry vanilla not enough okay next unit now